So today I'm going to do a 16 by 20 black canvas. It was purchased this way. And I'm going to put my push pins in the corners. So that's what I'm going to be pouring on. But I have my new Deco Art pouring medium that they sent me to experiment with. I have not seen it out on the shelves yet. And I enjoyed my metallic painting so much that I did the other day. I called it Precious Metals. This is it. And it's varnished and ready to ship to Colorado from North Carolina. So um, I was pretty pleased with this. I love metallics anyway. Who doesn't love metallics because they're flashy? But I had to come back in and add some black into it because to me it was just too monotone looking. Like everything was the same tone, even though it was different colors of metallics like copper and gold and the uh, champagne color. They were all so close in value that it just didn't have enough oomph to it. So I added in a little bit of stuff that had some black in it and I added a touch of white which I really don't want to do that again. Um, I mean this is fine. It's You just see just little tiny bits and pieces of the white. But um, anyway this is sold and I have a festival on Saturday that I had posted a video that you may have seen. The video was me preparing and I showed my workspace and how crazy it looks and all that. So <clears throat> I don't have time to do a lot of pour painting this week or swiping or anything, but I wanted to actually do one pour painting with the Deco Art pouring medium because I just can't wait till next week. I'm just too eager to try it out. And metallics are kind of funny because they're heavier, there's so much more pigmentation and stuff that they really don't work like typical colors anyway. So I'm really curious to see how this pouring medium works out. So we're going to find out. The other thing is typically I add Floetrol or Oetrol to my paints. And with the pouring medium, you're supposed to be able to use strictly the pouring medium one part of it to one part paint is what it says on the label. Well, typically when I add Floetrol to a metallic or a tube paint, they're thicker and you have to add water to them. Uh, Kraft Acrylics one-to-one -one ratio of paint to pouring medium. And then if you do medium body, which I don't use that either, but medium body would be possibly the, the texture of the acrylic, the, uh, the metallics, or like, you know, the acrylic paints that you use out of tubes, those would be what I consider medium body paints. On that one it says one to three, so one part paint to three parts pouring medium. So it's 16 ounces, and... For a canvas this size, I'm going to probably need um, at least 11 or 12 ounces of paint. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to I'm going to add black into this. On the other one, I did not put black in until the very end, where I put a ribbon through with the black in it. I'm going to add black into the dirty pour this time. So one, two, three. Four, five. I'm going to have about six colors of metallics and black. So I need a couple of ounces for each color. So I think what I'm going to do is do the one to one ratio. And then I think if, if I need to add water, I'll add water if it feels too thick. I'm just going to see how it feels when I'm stirring it in because that's usually when you can tell if it's the right consistency is if it pours off your stick like honey and if it's too 
thick, it's going to just, your stick is either going to stand in the paint, and when you pick it up, nothing's going to hardly pour off because it's going to be really creamy thick. And I suspect that that's going to be the way it is with some of the metallics. I'm not sure until I've actually mixed it up. But that's my plan is to do one-to-one -one ratio, and then we'll adjust if we need to. You know, this is the largest bottle that they have is 16 ounces. And so when you do multiple paintings, sometimes I do several paintings a day, or I'll do at least five or six in a week, you're going to go through some stuff really, really quickly. And that's why I often use Floetrol or Oatrol. So I'm going to see how this works. I'm going to give the pouring medium from Deco Art a try. So I'll be back in a minute. I've got all Deco Art. This is Extreme Sheen Copper, Rich Espresso, which is like a bronze and most other brands. Emperor's Gold, which I like it because it's kind of a, a warm gold. And then this is their brass, bright metallic. This is a thicker paint of theirs. It comes in the bigger containers. This is Peacock Pearl. And this is their multi-surface satin. I had a bottle of that. It's called Black Tie. I decided to add in a teal color. I just really wanted to throw that in just to see how that would go with the rest of the color scheme. So the ratio on the bottle said one to one. So I'm eyeballing it from the side and it's liquidy. And this is not thick like Oatrol or Floetrol, so it kind of goes into your paint. So you kind of have to know where you want to stop pouring. I've got water in case I need it. And I'm going to speed through the mixing process and we'll start back later talking when I get ready to pour. Okay, I had to go from one cup to another on this one. I had poked a hole in it, obviously using it before. I try to reuse my cups, and I had done a dirty pour flip cup and poked a hole to let the air out, and so therefore I had two cups that had holes in them, so they're all stacked up in another cup. But they all, all the paints mixed in really well with the pouring medium. I don't need to add water to any of them. The thickest one is the Peacock Pearl, which is not, it's not a metallic, but it's pearlized. And it's the thickest one, and maybe it's because I didn't add enough pouring medium, so I'm going to add a little bit more to that one, maybe. So this is a 16 ounce container, and to mix these colors up, I used probably about 12 ounces of the 16 ounces. It looks like I've got four or five ounces of paint left in that. So I'm going to put the water away. I didn't need it. Uh, and I'm going to put my paints away. Move them to the side. So there's my color palette. I've got the different metallics. I did not do the uh, champagne colored 
uh, metallic because that was a Martha Stewart paint, which I don't even think I can find them anymore. And I wanted to stick with all deco art paints to go with the deco art pouring medium so that it, I could see how they all work together. And it, I don't know about the cells um, as far as if this will produce any cells or not. So what I'm going to do is a little test piece. I've got a picture frame that's wrapped in plastic. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is pour on, put a little bit on this piece of plastic and that way I'll have a test pour before I do it to see if I need to add any silicone. So I'm just putting a little bit of each color. bit of copper back there and then the turquoise blue but I want to I want to see how it reacts together before I add silicone if I don't need it zoom in a little bit here too so you can see. I just, I love the metallics and it, this may tell me that I don't want to put the blue in or I don't know, you know, just by doing this little test piece first. So they're beautiful colors. My other heat gun died. I have another one that is like a cheapo and I don't think I'm going to stick with it because it does not have the power the other one has. But let me see here. And this may be just because it's metallics, but I don't see any cells. And you know, that might be a pretty thing on a canvas without cells, I don't know. But um, I think what I'm going to do is add Coconut Milk by OGX to my colors. So what I'm going to do is add like a half pump, a slight half pump, because when you pump this thing, there's a really probably too much of an amount that comes out. Pretty much with cells, it's, you know, less is better if you want larger cells. And usually I do go for larger cells unless I'm doing the swiping. So with the coconut milk, I've started just doing like a half a pump or less in each color. And sometimes I skip a color or two, but I'm going to add that next. Okay. So I'm going to put my gloves on, and then I'm going to add a little bit of coconut oil, milk, coconut milk to the colors. Before I do that, I'm going to, instead of laying out a black layer of paint, do it this way like I did the last time. And I'm just wetting the canvas. I'm going to do a larger cup this time than I did on the last pour because I think I didn't give myself enough paint. So Tell you what, I'm not going to put any in the black. So that was like a, a very half of a pump. It wasn't even a real pump. I'm just barely stirring it. None in the black. So.
and I want a little bit of contrast between the colors so I'm going to try to switch off to get some contrast and I am throwing a little black in just in a like a trickle trying to keep it on the lighter side I'll do the I just love metallics. This would be pretty with a really verdigreen, you know, like a, you know, brass or copper, like the roofs or whatever, how they, the oxidation of the metal makes it turn kind of like a bluish green color. And that would be really pretty with this as well and that's kind of what I was thinking along with the turquoise lines was just to give it a little bit of that oxidation kind of look we will see how it turns out so I'm just switching back and forth I'm not sure what a solo cup, how many ounces are in our solo cup, but I think I have plenty of paint for this one. The last time I shorted myself and I had to kind of make up for it around the edges. But just see, like just dripping on there and how it bleeds out on the wet canvas is, is pretty. I am going to get my aluminum foil pan. I'm going to have it ready just in case. Try to keep my table as clean as I can. Here's my little sample that's been sitting for a while on the um, table. And you can see still there's no cells at all on that. But because I did add the coconut oil, there's some cells going on. So I'm going to put my heat gun on it, which I don't like this heat gun because it's cheap. But it's the only one I've got. It just doesn't have enough oomph, and it puts, this one blows more air, whereas my other one was more powerful with the heat, but it didn't blow, because I don't want to, I don't want to dry things out, so, um, I think I am going to pour the rest of this black, and this black is kind of a funny color, it almost looks like navy blue. It's not a black black. It's not really it's like super dark. It was um, called black tie, and it's a multi-surface satin paint of theirs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of just spread this around. It really looks navy against this black canvas. That's the weird part. So I don't think that I will use that again for a black pour. If I want something really dark that's on the bluish tint, then I know what to use, huh? 
and well, I guess I'll just go ahead and tilt and see what happens. I was afraid the aqua color would take over and it hasn't, which is a good thing. I didn't want it to. I just wanted it to be kind of an accent. Don't be afraid to manipulate the paint a little bit with your fingers or whatever because um, you can kind of create what you want if it's not exactly the way you see it, you know, come out on the canvas. I like the, the fact that the black showed up. It didn't overtake the colors, but I'm glad it's there. So what I do is I, I kind of... Um, We'll take the paint and roll it around the edge of the canvas, like with your drips. So you're not having to, if you don't want to tilt it and lose what you've got on your canvas, then you kind of take the paint and bring it to the canvas, you know? I'm just making sure my edges are covered. Basically, I'm just following kind of the pattern of what's already on the canvas. I don't know if I did that or if that's just the way it landed. And the richest fresco did not show up very much. Well, I guess it did if I put it there and it doesn't really show that much. So I'm going to stick some through here though because this is pretty... I'm swiping on some of that turquoise color. 
this. I like this, but I'm going to introduce some turquoise there just to give it some interest. See, there's nothing in this island of color right here. So I'm going to introduce some of the black. Try to tone it down a little bit with the... And then bring in some turquoise here as well. And you can just, you know, swirl it and twirl it around and kind of make it feel like it happened from the pour, you know, not from you adding it. So I just kind of trail it around until it meets up with another area that has some black in it. So the copper color did not show up as much, which is okay. The black kind of got heavy here, um, and that's kind of okay. I wanted some contrast, and I got it, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to heat it one more time.
I'm just kind of taking my skewer here. So I'm just kind of following the some of the patterns that are already there. And you can make your own pattern. And that was just about the right amount of paint for this 16 by 20 canvas. Um, I think sometimes people think like the paint is like super, super thick on here and it's not really. You're talking about a very fine coat of paint. So there it is with the, uh, the Peacock Pearl mixed in. I like it. I hope you do. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'm going to take the leftover paint and save it for something else down the road. I'll just cover it up and save it for something. Thank you for watching.